And uh, <clears throat> I, I went and auditioned uh, for Teo D'Alessio, which is Mateo, and uh, I got a call back, and I nailed it. I w it was, matter of fact, it was Thanksgiving weekend. Um, I got a text message, and, it, and the text said, Al, don't cut your hair. So I text back, I said, why? <laughs> so she, well, Meredith was like, you know, we're waiting for Marty. So. And then Marty Marge, okayed it. And then, you know, a few hours later, she's like, Marty, uh, you know, picked you. Oh, man. So, I can't, you know. I'm hearing you out. You know, it's like we talk about it with George Santana. Oh, it's my a friend, dream. People remember the great George dream. Santana. Uh, I mean, this is a beautiful, but such a difficult business. Yes, very it's hard. It's so hard. Very hard. Even, don't talk about it, but you can't help it to bring how hard it is. Yeah. And, and, and when I see people that I care about, that I admire, getting a big break, getting a chance, I mean, it's, it's just a, an opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah, that's why, you know, I... You, I've done so many independent films. I know, you're a character and, actor, you know, you've been around. Yeah, and, and you know, from going from the independent world to like, you know, HBO and, you know, Paramount or, you know, these big productions, it's such a big difference because everything is, you, you have to be perfect every time. And here and I am. I've barely done anything. I was in Insidious with, with Insidious George and Santana. George and Santana. Yeah. Show and here uh, right after. you know, lo and behold, I went out on a couple auditions and, and boom. Got yeah, I mean, must yeah. be doing something right. I don't know. All I know is when I'm on the set. But you're good. You're good. You're good. I well, mean, you know, guys, I mean, it's, it's like you can sense it. You the one thing I know for sure is that you can't good. tell how good you are yourself. You just can't. You're just too. Uh, you're too. You're too biased. But you got a But my sense. approach to the set. I mean, the first time I walked on the set. I said, my God, this is a huge production, bigger than I even thought. Yeah. And there's so many people working, filming everything. Yeah, and that's I said, the you know what my difference. job is here today? My goal is to be quiet, do my job, hit my marks and exactly, right. and not give anyone any reason to feel like they need to avoid me. You know how people are like, oh, you know, Mr. Van Patten, it's such a pleasure to meet you. No, 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 no. Just sit there quietly, do my job, let them do their job, and that's like, that's the professional approach that I thought I should take. Yes. Right. I keep looking at this picture. Uh, I want to talk picture, about yeah, my... I want to talk about it because we are running... My karmic oh, yeah. connection to right Boardwalk Empire. Have... This, we that talk is about my it. grandfather, and the story goes like this. Steve Buscemi plays Nucky Thompson, who in real life was Nucky Johnson, who lived in the Ritz Hotel on the boardwalk in Atlantic City uh -huh. in the 20s. That's my grandfather as a bellhop in the Ritz Hotel he in Atlantic like City Hope in Hope. 1920s. Everybody looked like Bob Hope back then. <laughs> but, you know, my grandfather would be, uh, you know, have such a thrill about this because he passed years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like he's my karmic connection in the sky, egging me on and right. getting me into this. And uh, I'm sure that he's enjoying it wherever he is. It's Charles Chick Dickerson. Is, they called him Chick, but that's Chick. That's my mother's father. And uh, I, I hang that picture up in the uh, yeah in the makeup trailer. Yeah. <laughs> While we're getting our hair cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a connection right there. Yeah, that's a connection. Yeah, that's, so, you know, that's I'm, a I, great I, connection. In a way, I'm supposed to be part of this production. Well, it was meant to be. I have a family history there. So he carried Nucky's bags for crying out loud, my grandfather. He's, that's a great character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, He's, I mean, do you see the carnation that I'm wearing here? Is it yeah. On the side, here? yeah. <laughs> oh, you see? That's the reason <laughs> yeah. why. I said, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I, I seen him. Oh, Nucky with the carnations, oh, that's right. Oh, I have it right here. Look at that, and smell good too. <laughs> Two ninety nine. Not bad. <laughs> got the price. When you said it, Al, that uh, you were talking about how good you have to be, how perfect you have to be. Jane Fonda is right here in my mind. Uh, I saw her in an interview not too long ago, and she said that, "Oh God, you're in this business, and you know your responsibility. Once you go to the set, and you see people, all these people working to make things right." Just, you have to get it right. You know, there's no any second thoughts about it. You gotta hit it right on it. Well, that goes back to method. Right. I mean, you know, when, when, when you're an actor and, and you're cast and there's, you're in a room full of other professionals, okay, and you're like. It's like an orchestra, everyone you know, working, every, every, doing their part. Everybody has to, you know, know their stuff. I right. mean, and you have to be perfect. And, and you know, my method and what I use is repetition. Use, a constant repetition. You and, you know, 
constant memorization, and you know, I just, everything has to be perfect. Do if you it like to be by yourself, right before you go jump into a scene? If you have about half hour, what do you do? You like to stay by yourself? Well, you like to interact with our actors? Or oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't make a difference. Well, to me, I, you know, it depends on, on, on how much I, uh, you know, how many lines I have. Right. Uh, and how much work I have to do. Okay. If I have, a, you know, a speech or a monologue or just a couple lines here and there, I'll just zone out. I, I'll, you know, I want to be alone and just concentrate on what the task at hand is. If it's just one or two lines and it's, you know, bang, 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 and everybody just does their thing, you know, I, I usually mingle with the cast okay. just so we, you know, just to, for camaraderie and, you know, so we know each other better. Like this, when we shoot, you know, it, it feels like we all know each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it brings it's organic. It, right. My approach is I, I need to know as much about my character as possible. Right. In other words, I dwell for weeks on where this person is from, where they've come from, a, a story behind how they, it. it's the backstory to the character. Right. And when I beat that to death and then beat it to death again and again, mm -hmm. then I'm comfortable doing everything else. And the lines come and uh, it just, you know, but if there's you a be, moment, be that Tennessee person. Williams used to say, the, the moment greatest, is, the an, important, is an important Irish. concept. He used to say that, that there's a moment when the character and the actor, they just. Yeah. The aha moment, you might what, even right call that. Right in the middle, they come to each other. You know, because actors are always reaching out, right? But he said that we have to let the character speak to us. I believe that. I never heard that, but I believe that very much. Because right? you have to let the character You have in. to let the character speak to you. Well, what I did was, when I, when I got cast as uh, uh, Matteo D'Alessio, um, <clears throat> I... Once I got cast, I bought the book. I started reading. I didn't see too much of, you know, our, our brothers, you know, from the show mm -hmm. in, in the original book. Uh, so I had to do, you know, I went online and uh, I found the Lanzetti brothers, which they, the show changed the name to the Lesio brothers. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a Teo the Les, uh, Lanzetti. And they were, uh, you know, a gang of brothers which they picked, uh, I mean, they were part of the show. And I studied him because that's who my character was. Mm -hmm. And he was a, a killer along with his brothers that ran Philadelphia for the past. What on earth? Are there okay. crickets in here? Is that a phone? Oh my that's God, okay. that what happened. are you doing? But you know and what? A parking that's meter. Beautiful. I need to put a quarter in the meter. You see? That's yeah. beautiful. I love when things like that happen because you see? It's, it's real. Beautiful. It's real. You have to make it happen. Right. That's it. You have that's to make right. it happen. So what I did was I I, I researched the Lanzetti brothers. I found uh, Teo Lanzetti and I studied him and I read about him and what they did. It. And then I just, I when they gave me my lines, I try to recreate him in my own way. Now, let me ask you, we'll get, because I want to jump to different topics and we have to move a little faster Yes. Here, okay? Absolutely. Number one, the director, when you went to the set, is he was direct about things, he was specific, that he did too much talking, like Clint Eastwood likes to keep it simple. I worked Directors mostly, work in different uh, ways. three out of the four episodes I worked with Tim Van Patten. And okay. Tim is, I mean, who, could you, who better to work with on your first time with a big production, okay. I think, than Tim Van Patten. I mean, one of the nicest, warmest men you'll ever meet on a set. And uh, pretty much trusts the actors to do everything. And he is and he open?